in the middle 1800s in a place in the United States where American democracy was hatched. See, in the 1700s in Concord, Massachusetts, people were gathering and having conversations about the democracy that we heard about from France. And then they developed an Amer American version of that. So we were hatching the ideas of an American democracy where every person has value. Every person has inalienable rights that are, you can't take them away. The, these, uh, you can't take them from somebody. The right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, that that's in every person. You're wired that way. The universe wants life. The universe wants freedom. The universe wants you to experience and express all that you're capable of being and doing, as unique as your thumbprint. Is, is the genius that wants to seek and move through you. You fast forward 100 years, and now people are having conversations that would become known as the Concord Conversations. In a home that is still owned by the family where they, that owned the house 150 years ago, the Emerson family. On Sunday evenings, they would invite neighbors and friends who were also interested in asking big questions to come together and talk and discuss and stir each other up with big questions. These were known as the Concord Conversations where the Emersons, Nathaniel Hawthorne and his family, the Alcott family and others would gather. Ultimately, after a few months, they decided to include their handyman in these conversations. The handyman's name, Henry David Thoreau. Uh. Emerson, in the house, there is uh, a stack. All the furniture is still there. Much, it's 150 years later, it's been preserved by the Emerson family. You can see all the walking sticks. As Emerson used to love to walk in the surrounding area. One day he asked Henry if he wanted to go for a walk with him, and Henry said yes. And he said, well, do you want to take one of the walking sticks? And Henry said, no, it'll be too much company. He had a way of being where he really wanted, Henry David Thoreau was deeply seeking to do what he called learning to suck the marrow out of aliveness. So after many of the conversations, he decided he wanted to do an experiment. And he hiked about a mile and a half away, and there he built a little house where he would live in this experiment for two years, two months, and two days. And then he would write a little essay about his experiment. And the essay was called Walden. Joe and I, my husband and I, went to Concord, visited these places, sat in the vortex of that energy. And as a student of this material for many, many years, uh, Emerson and I share the same birthday. So I've been always like deeply interested in his trying to discover the deeper meanings of his writings. So we went to Walden and we sat there and had a picnic and read some from the essay. And when I was reading the conclusion of Walden, there is one line where Years ago, Raymond Hollowell would speak this line, and I knew that in that was a code for becoming, a code for unlocking some of the secrets of how we can really work with the laws of the universe. So let me share that with you, and then see over the weekend how we can unpack this as we move through the different laws into a greater understanding. You know, if you had, you know, inside this, this great safe, all the possibilities of the world, and you knew that they were there, but you just didn't know how to unlock it, you just knew that, that, that if you just had the right combination, you could open that up and have anything you wanted. When I mentioned to you, when I began to discover the laws of the universe, I felt like I'd moved from an attic, found my way through the house, and opened the doors, and there was a technicolor world waiting. Now, it's not to say that I haven't retreated to that attic now and then and forgotten my way, but I never forgot that there was a way out. I never forgot that there was another world available and that by bringing my thinking back in harmony with truth and beginning to practice again, it would happen much quicker and much easier. So this is what Thoreau said. I have learned this at least by my experiment. And I'm inviting you into an experiment that you make a decision this weekend. Life is made out of choices and decisions. And you will, whether you just consciously know it or not, you'll make a decision this weekend about how much you're going to apply this in your life. Because if you don't make a decision for it, the gravitational pull of the life you've been living and the habits you have formed will have dominance over your life. And you'll go back, you'll have had an interesting weekend, maybe an entertaining weekend, and maybe even an inspirational weekend. But it won't have been a transformational weekend. Because only if you apply this will it transform your life. Will anything really change? So Thoreau said this, he did an experiment learning how to live with these laws in such a way that they would become incorporated, part of the corporeal, part of the body of his life. 
And then he wrote, I have learned this at least by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of their dream, endeavoring to live the life they are imagining, one passes an invisible boundary. All sorts of things begin to occur that never otherwise would have occurred. One begins to meet with a success unexpected in common hours. New, more universal, more liberal laws begin to establish themselves around this person, or the old laws are rearranged in one's favor. Nevertheless, one begins to live with the license of a higher order of being. Do you remember when you got your driver's license? It's like, if you think back, you might remember, or you've had a child in your life who just recently got their driver's license, there's this like, oh, this feeling of authority and power and choice, and I can come and go and do what I want, and, and there's a whole liberation feeling that comes with having that license. That's a very small license compared to the license that we're talking about now, a license of a higher order of being.